So today we are going to be templating and then shaping the cuff and thumb pieces. Those are the last um, components for this gauntlet. So let's get right into it. So once again, let's do some speed templating here. I just want to quickly rough out a shape. And I'm designing on the fly here with this entire gauntlet, just kind of doing it based on um, things I've done in the past, just so I'm just having a little bit of fun with it, kind of jamming as I go here. So let's see how things actually work out. I'm gonna do something like that with the cuff kind of sweeping up here. I have the, uh, my radiating lines kind of drop into this side here and I wanna kind of carry that out, giving it a swooping pattern that way, just kind of working with that effect. I think that should work pretty good. Just coming around there, keep it flat on that side. So now I do need to make the greave door, or the van plate door, not greave. Okay, so these are the templates then. I think we can go right on to cutting these out on steel. And I'm gonna use 18 gauge for that. So I've got my three pieces trimmed out here are traced out now, I'm going to trim them out on Beverly, so let's get started. I want to put some fluting on this piece here, the van plate um, or the cuff. And what I'm trying to do is follow the, these lines coming down there and then have something swooping out. So what I'm gonna do is just uh, temporarily curve this into position and then be able to lay out exactly what I'm trying to do. So just over to the anvil. I just want to get a bit of a curvature on there. So now I can set this on where it's going to go. And I'm going to draw a line. So I'm taking my center line here. I'm just coming up here and then I'm going to swoop down over to my point here. And then pick up from my other radiating lines there. And once again, just try to come up with something interesting. I'm going for a very organic sort of flowing um, shape here. Something like that. So what I need to do now is um, flute those or emboss those lines. And I'll do that on my little homemade rig on the power hammer. First thing I need to do is transfer these lines to the other side here. I'll just take a moment to do that. And I'm doing this in a very uh, cavalier fashion here because I'm just kind of making this up as I go along. So if you were doing something um, where you're trying to replicate something, you would be much more anal and precise about this, but I'm just kind of having fun with it. And while we're at it, I'm gonna be rolling the edge on this. So I'm gonna use my uh, beading die to start that 
well. Okay, so over to the power hammer. It's gonna get noisy. Okay, beads are roughed into shape. Now it's time to start shaping uh, the cuff around and start putting some holes in. So let's get right into it. Okay. So the piece is roughly shaped now. I think that's working out okay. I think what I'm gonna do now is lay out the holes here and uh, get it actually fastened to this piece and see how it moves with it. So I punched my two holes there and then lined up those, made some little marks for slots. So I wanna put two more slots in there. So I'm gonna try to figure out where I put my slot. Uh, punch and knock those guys out. Let's see if it fits together. Bolt it in and see if it works. Now I know what some of you are thinking, why don't you use Clecos instead of bolts? It would be faster. Talking to you, Levi, I know you're thinking that right now. Um, I just find with things like gauntlets like this, with all the movement and the slots and stuff like that, the Clecos don't really seem to work. They just, um, when I'm moving it around, they tend to jump out. So I find bolts might be a little slower, but they kind of hold everything into position a little bit better for me. Okay, so that looks like it is moving there. I will get some more bend out of that so I can get this bending down a little bit, but I'll have to wait until I get that together. But it looks like I've got decent spacing in there. This is really the critical joint here. A lot of movement happening here. So this floater wrist piece and then these pieces coming off of it allows for the movement this way, but also to come down this way. So I'll have to wait until I tighten it up and then I'll be able to get that down. So I should be able to get um, I don't know how many degrees that is right there, something like 70 um, coming off the horizontal. And that should be sufficient to, to make this gauntlet work. So that's working well. Let's do the door part for the back of the van plate and the thumb. So one of the issues of making stuff so rapidly and not really um, taking your time at it is that I've run into an issue here with my templates you can see completely off there and I didn't even check because I'm in the heat of battle here trying to get this video done so I'm not really doing my due diligence but paying attention so I've got this way off here and what I'm going to need to do is do a little bit of alteration to make that work. All right, so that is fitting a bit better now. Sorry about that, but uh, we can fix this little ugliness here in post-production that will uh, clean up in the grinding. So uh, pretty much there, a little more fine tuning, and then we will hinge this together. I was flirting with the idea of using a leather hinge, which I haven't done in a long time, but uh, the way I'm looking at it now, I think what I'm gonna do is just throw a piano hinge on here. Um, just to get a nice um, straight seam across here. It's fairly quick and easy. Uh, not historically accurate by any stretch, but I think it would, it would be nice just to close in this outer side here. So uh, I'll just get going on that. This is what's called a piano hinge, a continuous hinge, I guess would be the technical term. Uh, so I'm just gonna trim it off here to my the right length, but I'm looking at my three holes that are already in this thing. 
and just kind of equalizing them out is we're gonna it's gonna determine where I'm cutting this thing off. So across there, across there. I go over to the Beverly shear. So I'm just gonna trim the corners off of it. I use, these last two holes, I use my Whitney punch to punch the holes. This is a very handy tool. Uh, but I do find it problematic a lot of times when you're trying to get in to be able to see where that die is actually coming down. You have to have really good lighting uh, to see where it's going in to get it positioned properly. And sometimes it's easier just to go in with a drill so you can see exactly where it's going in. But there's tight spots where this thing really shines and uh, so I swap out between the drill and the punch. Okay, so I've got uh, my holes punched for the hinges there. Everything is going to, going to line up nicely here now. So at this point, I am just going to make the thumb. I still gotta make that thumb piece. So let's shape that and get it roughed on and then we've got this done, at least uh, all the components. So for the thumb, <clears throat> this coming off the hand here, and I think what I'll do is put a little rig, something that's got a bit of a curvature to curves to the thumb. Once again, I'll need to do that on the inside. Just get kind of a sweeping line there that bulges into that area there. So starting straight there, bulging into that. On my trusty wooden stump. And just using a dull cold chisel. And I'm just going into this little depression that is actually in the stump. And I'm just knocking it down now. I'm not worried about refining that. Um, I'll come back to that and sharpen up that line. But first of all, I just want to get the basic line established. to my steak and just sharpen up that line a little bit. Okay, that is the basic shape there. I've got this down, this bottom portion here swooping away so that when I move my thumb, it doesn't jab into my wrist. Um, and I've got more or less the, the correct shape here. I just need to do a little refining to balance things out and then we are ready to attach it. I'm going to attach the thumb onto the hand here and this is generally the position and I actually use this um, sliding rivet here as my attachment point for that and I use a hinge. So what I do is take these little brass hinges I get from the hardware store 
Uh, they're just little cabinet hinges, got a fleur de lis on there, but that, not really the look I'm going for. So I take the uh, hardware store cabinet hinge and I shear it down on the Beverly shear and then onto the grinder to make it into this compact, tiny little hinge, um, but brass, so it's a nice finish and also self-lubricating, so it moves fairly well. Um, and I find they work very effectively for the thumb piece. So that will then go on to here. And then, and this is where I wish I had three arms. If I had one coming out of my stomach, like in, uh, what was that, Total Recall? I think that would be a very handy thing. Maybe aesthetically not that pleasing, though. Ah! Okay, there we have it. So now we have all our components. Now we're ready to go to the finishing stages. So join us in our next video. We will do some finishing, uh, get these all nice and shiny, and then we'll be able to do the final assembly. We're so close. So stick around. See you again.